Brothers and sisters, friends and family, much love to everybody out there. Greetings, greetings, greetings. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you had a wonderful week today. If you're listening to this as I'm posting this, this is a preparation day. It is a sixth day. It's a Friday. It's the day that we are supposed to cook what we are going to cook. We seethe what we're going to seethe. We do whatever we're going to do so that tomorrow we rest. And when as the sun sets tonight is when I believe a Hebrew day begins and also ends. And so tonight at sunset is when Shabbat begins and it ends tomorrow night at at sunset as well. And it is a one of these um, commandments that is an appointed time, right? This is not something that's just a, a whim of a day. This was a day that was built into creation. It was a day that was built be, it was built before creation. In fact, the people of the Shimaim, the, the messengers, Yahuwah, his son, they kept the Sabbath day prior to creation and before anything ever began. And so we do know there is a seventh day Shabbat in the Shimaim. We know that it is an appointed time that our creator has said, come before me and let us rest. Let us as a people not do any kind of servile work. We're not supposed to, to sell anything. We're not supposed to buy anything. We're not supposed to do any of that. Which is why Yah Scriptures is only available six days a week. And Yah Scriptures is the greatest English translation of scriptures you will ever find. You'll find it at yahscriptures.com and it's Y-A-H and then scriptures.com. Just like you see right there. And every version of it is free, guys. Every single version that we have that is available that we can give away free is, is absolutely free. And this is the hard copy. And this hard copy is available and it is limited. Guys, it is a limited edition. Um, we hope that the creator of the universe allows this, this to go on and this prison ministry to go forward. But... It all depends upon, you know, how these first scriptures go out. And so there is a very good chance that this could only be a one-time print, which means there's way under 2,000 right now, and they are dwindling day after day. And so if you guys are looking for a hard copy of a book that's not anywhere out there, you cannot find a, a book like this. The Grifters, the, the criminal enterprise known as the Hallelujah Scriptures, has a lesser quality, more aired version of it for around $400 plus shipping. And so people are, are, it's costing literally people $500 for a lesser quality, lower print. And this is a larger print, guys. This is a large print. This is for all of us that have struggled with our eyes, that struggle with what we can't see, or those of us who like to read forever. And it's better to read this big print than it is to have to squint and look at these little tiny things for hours and hours and hours. So this is the absolute uh, best family study guide scriptures you will ever find anywhere and it is limited and it is available right here and so um if you guys would like to get it it is available and this is the back of of the scriptures as well now inside of this book is one of the the greatest books i think have ever been written and it is the it is a story of uh it, well, I believe if we if we put this in the order of which it should be, then this would be like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Khalidi is what it would be. This would be the fifth book in the Besorah of the Good News. Somehow it was pulled out of our scriptures. Um, somehow it was pulled out of the way forward. And so now it is back over here. And I got to find out where I was at right here. Right here. And so, as we're reading through this, guys, these are what I believe are the words of our Messiah. Everything that I have been able to see in this, everything I've been able to read as I read it over and over and over, as we typed it up, as we put it into print, it matches everything in Torah. In fact, it gives us a better way forward. It helps us understand better how to walk the Torah life. And the Torah life, for those of us who just know Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, can be kind of clear cut it's a it's a black and white road forward and we there's not a lot of there's there's no middle ground right we, we're either in torah and we're obedient to the law statutes and commandments or we're, or we're not but books like this give us a clear understanding of how somebody who walked with our creator as his direct family in a direct presence in a different realm it's the same rules and regulations that they have. This is the same Torah. The Torah was created before creation. 
all of this, all of the ways forward. And when you look at what the meaning of the Torah is, it literally means the way forward. And so this is um, this has been an incredible journey. The entire Yah Scriptures ministry, the entire uh, exposing the Hallow Yah Scriptures grifters, it was it was an incredible experience. And I will just say that our Creator will give as much to everybody as everybody is willing to take on. And there is a lot of people out there who need a lot of love. We are we we have an incredible prison ministry that. It wasn't, or I guess it is organic. It's it's as organic as it can possibly be because I never ever called this this a ministry. I never ever said it. everyone's always saying, "Hey, how can we support your ministry?" And I'm like, "We don't really have a ministry," but I guess there's no other word for it other than taking care of the brothers and sisters in chains. And we are working very hard and very diligently. And now there is groups of us guys. There's multiple people that have taken on brothers and sisters. Um, in Texas, death row, people that I have begun getting scriptures to, people that I've been getting, throwing water on, the, the seeds that are in the soil, pushing and prodding and trying to get them on their knees. And now we have brothers and sisters that are grabbing a hold of these guys that I, I've already gotten scriptures into by the hand of our creator. And now they're working with them, guys. And so this ministry is absolutely taking off. It is something that I can't thank you guys enough for everybody who is volunteering to help with the brothers and sisters in chains. There is always sisters and there are always brothers in chains for any one of you guys who want to um, share a little bit of life, share a, bit, a little bit of love, a little bit of scriptures. We're looking for Torah keepers, right? I'm not, I'm not looking for those who are in, you know, unfortunately, pagan cults. And I, I'm not looking for those who are going to... Um, harm these brothers and sisters more than how they've already been harmed because they're already in these these things called faith-based programs where it's the same old Christian rhetoric. And so they're taking these guys who are literally going to have a day on death row at some point that they're going to get lethally injected and killed after living in solitary confinement for sometimes decades and decades. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of fish to be fished in here, and there's a lot of there's a f tremendous amount of interesting stories. There is not a day that goes by right now that I am not blessed by some kind of wisdom or some kind of an incredible speak that I get out of my brothers in, in chains. And right now, I got about thirty four brothers and sisters in Texas death row alone. That's just in Texas death row. And so all, we have still all our other people that are in regular prison that um, are doing regular time and, and aren't condemned to complete death. And so if you guys would like to be a part of that, please email me jboss008 at gmail.com. And I will figure out the best way for you guys to get this going. And to those who are already writing to our brothers and sisters in chains, much love to you. I pray it goes as um, jewels in the kingdom to come for the willingness to reach out and give a little bit of yourself to people who have literally no hope, no no sunshine, no no dreams, no aspirations. There's nothing. It's a very, very horrible existence in death row and in the prison system. So guys, here we go. Let's continue on and let's begin. Now, this entire chapter nine has been about those who are Messiah accepts and those who he rejects. And so it's very scary because, you know, as I was talking in the last last section is, is I fall short on a lot of these things. I fall short and it is one of these things that when we start to understand the qualifications and those who are taken and those who are not taken, um, it's just things to take note of. It's things to align our lives in a better fashion that we are able to be more qualified for the kingdom to come. Okay, so here we go. 28. Messiah says, I reject those who in any way cause needless suffering, for they shall go to a place of pain. Is it not written? He who causes distress, though it be done in secret, Yet he is seen and will repay. Hard words, right? These are these are these things that not a single word, not a single thought, not a single thing that we ever do as human beings will not be played for us on Judgment Day. We have to be accountable for every bad thing that we said, every bad thought we had, for every time that it's just, it's not holiness. And if we are not driving holiness to the kingdom, then, then we're, we're causing division and we're causing other things we're causing needless suffering and so a lot of times 
words in indeed of its own will cause needless suffering when people say things that don't need to be said for whatever reason when you start blanketly just attacking those around you that's needless suffering right there's no reason for this kind of discontentment and there's you know this causes all sort this this accounts to a lot of different things right um you know these are talking about people that are doing very evil things and they're doing it in secret hurting a lot of people and that's what the world is is really happened is is what has happened to the world it it is a a selfish place and it is a war ridden place it is a hoaxed out place it is a place of lies it is a place of complete deception you can't believe anything that you see on TV. You can't believe anything you, you hear. It is, is the only thing that I have ever found of complete 100% truth without a shadow of a doubt is the words of our creator. And then you have to be very, very careful because you guys have like, you have people like Stephen Pigeon who has taken a very good scriptures that was called the Sefer. And then he, according to his own words, he had an overzealous translator and it changed the identity of our Messiah to his father. It basically tossed in a tremendous amount of Trinitarianism. It corrupted his entire word. He corrupted his 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 application as well. One of the reasons that Yah's scriptures exist is because Stephen Pigeon, first of all, sent a whole bunch of updates that ruined what I was teaching everybody on on YouTube, and then I had no other option ex except to expose the the translation that's corrupted and you don't want a translation that is corrupted you want as pure of a translation as you can find which i truly believe yah scriptures is the greatest english translation of the scriptures and apocrypha that has been put forth with the kind of love that it is and i know it's hard to it's it's hard to fathom what exactly that means but it is a little family with sometimes three of us, sometimes four of us, for eight to ten hours a day for a, over a year where we sat meticulously, went through this line by line over and over and over. Literally, we would read it with, a, with a, a things like repay, quote, question mark, quotes. And there were two of us reading one copy and one of, one of us reading the, the main copy. And um, there, were a lot of, there were a lot of quotes, a lot of things that... that the, the older versions, when they ran through it, nobody ever sat and meticulously did a final version. And so this is probably, this is the, this is the super version of a amazing Hebrew root scriptures. And it has been, it's literally been changing the world. And I'm, I'm so excited about it. I'm so excited about the, the prison ministry. Let's continue on. Messiah says he rejects the hypocrites and self-deceivers for their loathsomeness will be properly purged. Is it not written? Words not written in the heart should never issue from the mouth. Um, these are hard things, right? Because all of us get into a tremendous amount of trouble with this one little organ called the tongue. And we say things and we will um, we will hold things in our heart. And, you know, when we read scriptures, there's a tremendous amount of things about scriptures. Even in, in, in Proverbs where it talks about we should not go to bed until we have an issue resolved. Like it, we don't want to live with hate. We don't want to live with um, evil. And when we live with evil, then it's really easy to start speaking evil speak. And the, the greatest weapon that has ever been devised is human speech in terms when people can crush souls. And it only takes, you know, men and women with a couple different spats where hearts and souls are completely broken and where marriages, where, where people cross lines inside of marriages, where they say things and they, they it's, it's uh, we have to be very, very careful because you cannot unclang the bells. You can never, never undo the speak. And that goes for brothers. It goes for sisters. It goes for families. It goes for all of this. And it gets kind of boring, I suppose, in a family to where the kids want to create a little bit of jokes and a, a little bit of, you know, they rib their brothers. But at the end of the day, uh, it just causes chaos. It causes contention. And even though a couple of, a couple of people laugh at the joke, it's evil speak and the evil speak can't be undone. And so a lot of times uh, in this house, we have times where it's Better not to talk at all. Everybody should just stop talking because it's just getting worse. So let's everybody stop talking and silence is far better because the uh, evil speak is just, it's just something that 
it destroys families. It really, truly does. And so we need to be careful that we don't wield these swords of uh, audio weaponry and hurt people. 30. Woe to all who hear my words but twist their meaning to suit their convenience. If a man says he is me but does not abide by my teachings, then he is a hypocrite. If he says, but I live in circumstances where this does not apply, he is a liar. Far better that such as these say, we are against you, for until they do, the world will not be reborn. You know, these are these incredible verses right here. We're looking for a reborn world, guys. We are looking for that kingdom to come. We are looking for the crescendo of evil to get to the precipice to where most flesh is lost, where most of the world is completely smoted, and then a hero, Messiah, is going to come, and it's going to be something incredible but the people that hang out with our creator and his son are going to be the people that love what the creator and his son say and what they represent now the son represents all that the father has taught him in every, all of his ways that is why the son is the word made flesh literally we had the incarnate son of the most high come before us and Give us a, an example that not only could the Torah be run by men that we can keep the Torah, that is not too hard. Instead, it's not a burden, that it's something that's absolutely light. And it's something that comes with a blessings. The, the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 are the, 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 the way you, either, you have half the chapter of, of blessings for keeping the Torah or you, the entire half the chapter are curses for those who don't want to keep it. And so anybody who ever says you know, um, that the laws of our creator don't mean anything, or you look into a religion and this is their, their premise is that the laws have been, uh, nailed to the cross. They are hypocrites. They are liars. This is not how Messiah lived. This is not how he taught. He taught us to be a light on top of the hill that we are supposed to be examples to the world. And unless it is us that is out there soldiering for the kingdom to come, then the kingdom will not come. The kingdom will come when man is ready for it. And that's us doing our jobs and seeking those who we can seek and fishing for men, bringing forth the fruit of the kingdom. And this is why this prison ministry is so incredible is because if you're looking for a people who have done the most heinous evil things you can even speak of, and they've been locked away sometimes for 40 years without one single human being ever touching them, without a single hug, without a single piece of intimacy ever and they never ever get out sometimes they get out of their cage one time a day one time a week for one hour sometimes they get two back in the days they used to get three or four for one hour but they have staffing issues and sometimes these guys never ever get out of the cage a lot of these guys on death row have zero windows they have no nothing guys this is a different kind of world and so when you're fishing for men in complete darkness this is what Messiah is talking about. This is why Messiah, the greatest healer, the greatest physician, the greatest example that we ever have, went to the people, the tax collectors, the, the prostitutes. The, this is the people that he supported. These are the people he went with. He didn't support the crime, but he supported the people and showed them the way forward. And this is where we absolutely need to show people the way forward. And so we're looking for this reborn kingdom. But we need soldiers for this kingdom. We need farmers. we got to have farmers out there. 31. I bring light to the threshing floor of life, of Kai, where suffering and misfortune are the flails, tribulation, and distress, the winnowing fan, and the wisdom of Yahuwah, the winnowing shovel. Here the wheat is separated from the husk, the chaff, chaff is thrown out, and the good grains gathered up. Now, a lot of people have not seen a threshing floor. I grew up on a farm, and so I was this kid 13 14 driving big grain trucks down the back roads of these old things into the the grain elevators and these grain elevators would take this this wheat and we would take it this is after we would combine it this is after we would actually process it so this entire winnowing floor has been put to the field instead of us having to have a winnowing floor we have a combine now the combines of today will sit there and it will winnow this and it will spit out the chaff and it will just separate the grains back in these days it didn't do that this same process is there. When we deliver this seed to the granaries, it's the good seed. You don't see a lot of bad things in there. The combine completely takes out most everything. Sometimes you get a couple grasshoppers in there. But for the most part, the entire head of barley, of wheat, uh, 
or whatever it is that you're growing is all smashed up and it's separated. And where it goes in the back of a combine, it spits right out the back. You have two options. You can either spin it around and spread it out or you can dump it into a pile where they will come by and they will bale that up into straw bales. And so this is the same process that our creator is going to have, right? There's a whole bunch of people where he's going to gather everybody together. He's going to crush them out. The people who are good, the good grains are going to be gathered up, right? We're going to be sitting in the back of that grain truck on our way to, to the Shamaim, the closest we may have. And it's not going to be the Shamaim, right? It's going to be the grain truck to the second kingdom. We're going to be heading to where Messiah is. And there may be a couple of us in the grain truck on the second Exodus with a couple messengers driving the grain truck. You never know how this is going to go, but we're never going to make it into the grain truck unless we are the people of our creator. He is not looking for the, the rapture people eating pork, worshiping on the wrong day, not caring about the appointed times, not doing anything for the kingdom. He's not caring about any of that. Right. If you think that sending missionaries to all these different countries and getting them all saved is some great thing, guys, you're damning these people to hell. Right. You may get the Messiah and the point of the Messiah out, but you don't get all the rest of it and why we actually need the Messiah to begin with, which is because we break the Torah because we didn't know the Torah. And so we walk in sin until we know what the Torah is. So, guys, we got to be those good grains. We got to get gathered up. We don't want to be burned. We don't want to be hanging out with this. I, I talk about this a long time. Can you imagine? Uh, imagine the world of Las Vegas, the dirtiest, greatest, horriblest place that you can think of, and that being where we are stuck at for all eternity with the pits of hell, people like this, the people that absolutely don't love our creator and there's going to be a separation, right? We're never ever going to have another chance to get back to our creator. We're never going to have another chance to get back to the kingdom to come. We will be like the rich man stuck on the other side, wondering if we can just please go tell people this is the way forward. And we will be told that Moses told us, which is what he told all of us, right? We have Genesis through Deuteronomy and that's, that's our way. Now, Messiah continues on and he says, sorry, guys, if I, if I, I come to build a new Hayekel temple, and if you say these are good teachings and I, and take them to your heart, but tomorrow revile your neighbor and deceive your kinsman, you are an unstable brick. If the temple Hayekel be built with such material, surely it will collapse and those within will perish. Is it not better if it were never built? If you say, but I am weak. Then examine your defects and take the first step to stability. But examination is a waste of time unless leading to rectification. A lot of stuff, guys. This is probably one of these things that um, I don't want to get too far because I've already rambled it up right here. But let's talk about this and let's, let's end on this right here. So Messiah says he's coming to build a new temple, right? Um, so if we say these teachings are good, which you have all of these so-called religions, right? You have all these religions. They all know the Jesus but they don't know what the Jesus has. He doesn't, they don't know what Yeshua, Yahushua, they don't know that he comes representing and heralding the kingdom to come. The kingdom to come represents his father, which represents the Torah, which represents all things that are good, which are righteous, which are holy, right? So when we hear these things, when we read scriptures and we know what to do, when we read the Torah, and then tomorrow we go and become, we start surfing pornography, right? Uh-oh, right? Because we just committed adultery. We just, if, we're, if you're married, you just made your wife an adulterer. You made, you, if you're a woman and have done this, you made your husband an adulterer. You have crushed your heart. You have, uh, your eyes are the windows to the soul, right? So if you know that, that you're, you're breaking a law, a very much law that's going to be on us till the end of time, and you don't do it, then uh, Messiah says we're in a stable brick. So, and then Messiah continues on. He says, if the temple is built with such material being a, a, a unstable brick, it's going to collapse. Now, what temple are we talking about? Well, we're talking about us as the temple, right? The entire purpose that when Messiah died and the, the, the curtain of the temple ripped from the bottom up and it was a, a, issuing on Pentecost to where the Ruach HaKodesh was basically our, instead of our creator having to meet with us in a temple on, on, you know, between two cherubim wings, he is now meeting with us 
in us. There's the ability for us, if we want to exhibit righteousness, if we want to follow in the path of our creator, if we want to do what our creator, the greatest designer of anything that we could even imagine, has in- requested us to do, and not only requested it, but he says, I'm going to give you a set of messengers. I'm going to give you a protection. I am going to give you blessings. I'm going to make your, your house prosper. I'm going to make your life prosper. I'm going to, I'm going to walk with you. But I want you to walk with me. I want you to be as perfect as you can be. I want you to be cling of heart. And it's sometimes people will say, you can't do the Torah. You can't keep the Torah. That's the first thing the Christian religion has been programmed to say is, is nobody keep the Torah. And at the end of the day, you're, you're right. Nobody can keep what we didn't know. But when we know what we should be keeping, then we can absolutely keep it, right? When we go against the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator, not only should it afflict us, but man, it should haunt us. It is one of these things that once we know it, we can't let it go. And if we are willing to let it go, then we're just an unstable brick. And if our bodies are the temple and our temple needs to have stable bricks and we're an unstable brick, then how do we ever expect that we're going to be catched up in that grain truck on the way to eternity? How are we ever thinking that, that we're going to be accepted into a set of society that has a rule set of righteousness that loves their neighbor as themselves, that loves the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator more than anything, more than anything, more than life is of itself. You love these laws, statutes, and commandments because not only do they spiritually guard you, they, they, they physically guard you. They, they guard everything about your life and they will make your life good, but they won't if you don't know them. And if you don't keep them, if you don't care, then how will they ever bless your life? So guys, with that, I'm going to wish you guys a Shabbat Shalom for tomorrow. We go live at 11 o'clock. Guys, it is getting large there. So many of you guys are coming from a lot of different directions. Um, It is on our main Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel. Guys, you can find us there. Um, We're happy to see you. We're happy to chat. We're happy to gather. We will be going over the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator, the things that our Creator has told us to write on our heart, mind, and soul. So we do a reiteration of those every Shabbat, gleefully, joyfully, and meticulously. And then we go into reading our, our Torah, where we are at right now in Leviticus, and then we are heading into Matthew. And so um, lots of good stuff. We can't wait to see you guys out there if you're there. So thank you all. Have a wonderful day. Much love. I'm out.